David Leonhardt, I agree with you. I think he's a gift, though. He's been on this show, too. He's also a veteran. Um, and the reason he's so important is because he does speak to the audience that we most need to convince. I know we're angry at these people who imposed all this stuff on us, but like he is a voice they will listen to and they get mad at him. But he does keep yeah. reminding them of what the truths are. And I will say, even when he was on this program, we were talking about Omicron. It was at the beginning. And I was like, well, you know, it doesn't seem to be that serious once you get it. So, you know, what's the big freak out about? And he was like, well, if you look at how easily it's spread, it will result in a massive number of deaths if it spreads like this. And some of my audience wrote me and said, well, we don't like him. I'll hear from him. He's a he's an alarmist. Well, he was right. Exactly what he predicted would happen did happen. So to his credit, you know, he speaks truth no matter who the audience he's in front of. Um, and I, I appreciate that in a in a reporter left or right um but yeah can we talk about that saturday night live skit so people (laughs) may have missed it because they're not really watching saturday night live but it it was an unbelievable it was like two minutes long we won't play the whole thing but it was all these actors from snl out there pretending to be democrats well well, sure pretending what great acting (laughs) um and like starting to criticize what the Democrats did to us for all this time with these mandates and shutdowns and so on, and like questioning the orthodoxy a little. Here it is. Well, I heard the CDC is going to lift all mask mandates soon. Oh, yeah, I know. It's so weird. It's it's like COVID's not over, but it's just going to stop. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Oh, you know, that reminds me of this article I read. Oh, honey, where... no one wants to hear about that. <laughs> well, it was in Bloomberg, and I thought it was interesting. What, uh, what article? Well, it Honey. Was... <laughs> it was just saying how mask mandates had, I don't know, little to no effect on COVID. Cue the shocked looks. The nervous water pouring. I'm sorry. It's not like I'm anti-mask or anything. I just sometimes wonder if any of the things we did actually helped. I went to a child's birthday party, self-careful, and they did gymnastics in masks don't and then they went into another room and took off their masks to eat pizza this is the end of me so did they really need the mask or no did any of us ever need the mask no oh my gosh it's you want to laugh but also i want to punch them in the face <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Nancy's been leading a, a one woman crew to uh, take masks off people's faces since about June 2020. Uh, oh, yeah. my sister from that. another mister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started having people over for lunch in June 2020. And everyone's like, wait, what? What do you mean? I was like, no, dude, just come. Just lunch. We're not going to French kiss. We'll just have like two <laughs> people. And everybody like crept out of their houses. I was like, it's OK. And it has been okay. So the skit was pretty funny. It was kind of, they had one a couple of years ago based on uh, Me Too, which I actually thought was even funnier than Mm. this one. But it is kind of amazing to me as someone who has not been of that ilk to think that people really, really, really believe what they're doing. Like they really believe they are right yeah. in having kept the masks on this time. I mean, do you is that really possible? I think there's yeah. a there's a signaling exercise with it that's pretty explicit, and we've seen this in school policies too, right? Like um, people were afraid to up until basically election day 2020 in blue states express out loud too much that they were against school closures because and this is on the record lots of people said that they didn't want to be perceived as trump supporters right Right, um they didn't want to be as trumpy my daughter uh who goes to middle school in brooklyn at the nice white parent school i i should uh (laughs) hesitate to add um uh she uh used to be a mask kind of fanatic but then she's now been kind of the leading put it on the chin or take it off altogether and she's immediately called trumpy um by her classmates in a place where there might be a, yeah, my, you know, my daughter, that's not likely, um, but uh, in a place that probably voted 103% uh, for Joe Biden this last time. So there's a, there's a, a sense of, uh, and you saw this in Portland, right? Where Nancy's done a lot of great reporting of, of people wearing a mask to signal 
their like a, a sort of solidarity and their political uh, point oh, of view more 100%. than that they grappled with any well, of science. There, we had Jennifer Say on the program, uh, uh, and I, I want to oh, yeah. hear about Portland one second, but we had Jennifer Say on the program who is the um, head of Levi's, and she got forced out because what was her sin? Was she out there parading against, you know, with the truckers against the vax mandates? No. Was she even parading against the mask mandates? No. She wanted the schools to be open. In San Francisco, which now we've seen, and I, wow. I want to get to this too. She she wanted those school board members recalled. She wanted the schools to be open, and they called that Trumpy within Levi's, supposed to be America's brand. Guess again, consider Wrangler, everyone. Um, and she <laughs> wound up fired. She wound up fired for that absurdity. Go ahead, Nance. Well, I was just going to I was going to say I, I just spoke with someone from Portland two days ago who said that, uh, you know, Portlanders keep their masks on because they want to signal that they care. They care more than old people. They care about old people and and whoever might be more vulnerable. And even now, even now that it's being lifted everywhere, they're not lifting it yet in 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 Portland. Uh, in terms of the recall, uh, Which was, we both were at. We were both at the recall party. Uh, we were at the recall watch party and it was like oh. being inside an Alka-Seltzer. It was so <laughs> exciting. You could tell like there was no way that they, these people were not going to be recalled and they were and they were slaughtered. They were slaughtered. And it was really yeah. really nice to see and I think I am going to go back and cover the uh the Chesa Boudin recall because oh I God. think there yeah. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.